I am uh, quite old enough to know the whole history. I have lived it, but I have been around quite a while in this business. And this, I wasn't around back then, is a printing press, a uh, Maranoni printing press going back, what, to the late 19th century or so. We've come a long way in communications and in marketing. When I was young, I knew I wanted to be a writer, so we went from typewriters to direct mail. That was big for me, and it's still big for a lot of companies. It's still very, very popular. It still works. Absolutely, not even a question. But for probably, I'd say, two-thirds of my career so far, that was my bread and butter, direct mail. And a lot of the principles still apply, no matter what channel you're using for your direct marketing activities. I remember when the internet came around, and I grabbed a pretty good AOL email address, Cargill123, I'm very proud of that, at AOL.com. I still have it, but I don't use it too much. I'm a Google guy now, a Gmail guy, but this was, what, mid-90s or so, so email became huge. So we went from direct mail, this is in marketing, to email marketing, and now where are we? And this is gonna segue into why we're here today. Now it's all in the palm of our hands. It's in Ashley's hands right now. It's in Rachel's hands right now. Everybody in this room, I'm sure, has a phone in front of them or in their briefcase or pocketbook. Mobile is where it's at, and I think social media is where it's at. I mean, again, it's integrated. It's with direct mail, it's with email, maybe with billboards, and maybe with phone calls, still, still very, very important. But look at the cacophony of content that we are being bombarded with day in and day out because of the portability, the instantaneousness of this device in our laptops. Okay, so it's all about social media. We've come from a Kodak moment, and those of you in the audience who are old enough like myself maybe remember the Kodak Instamatic camera, and it was all about capturing the Kodak moment. Now it's Twitter moments. Twitter has a new feature this year. We're not necessarily gonna cover it, so this is actually a bonus, what's new and different in social media in 2016. Twitter moments are a collection of tweets on Twitter all about one particular big event. If this was a room full of 10,000 people and everyone was tweeting and photographing and sharing, that might become a Twitter moment. Barack Obama, probably, almost wherever he goes on a daily basis is a Twitter moment. It's a collection of tweets, you can look it up on Twitter. It's highlighted by that guy right there, what is it, a little thunder, uh, lightning bolt. That tells you how to find your Twitter moments and it's always the big news of the day. I guess if you are popular enough, have a big enough event, uh, making the news, hopefully for good reasons, you, become, you will become a Twitter moment. Great expectations, much higher, higher expectations. More demands on a marketer's time and talent and tenacity than ever. I can tell you firsthand, I know more, wear more hats, work more hours, put out more work than ever. And that is pretty much the way it is for direct marketers, for marketers today. Everything has changed. This is the time for social media. That's why in 2004 I started blogging. That's why my job at Overdrive is exclusively social media, when in the past it was print and direct mail and email. Social media rules if you ask me. The benefits of social media are multitudinous, especially starting from the top, increased exposure. So great for PR, great for branding. But a close second, and what will really capture the attention of the direct marketers in the room, is increased traffic to your website. So it does drive clicks. It does drive organic direct type-ins. It increases exposure, the exposure of your content in Google search by, let's say, exponential factors if you're very active, if your company, if you, the thought leaders within your company are very active on social media. 
you're going to see your content pop and be found. You're going to develop a fan base. You're going to provide as a thought leader market insight, and you're going to be able to get that marketplace insight. I could go on and on. The benefits are countless. The number of users of social media are practically countless. If we're looking at 2016, and we should be, because that is the year in which we are existing right now, we have 2.13 billion people using social media. And going forward, looking just a couple of years ahead, they're saying that a third of the world's population is going to be using social media. User sizes of all the major social media properties are huge. But you, not so much. You're just one person or one company. How do you stand out among the clutter, among that cacophony of content that's bombarding all of us day in and day out? On Twitter, 310 million people are currently using Twitter. How do you stand out on Twitter? How do you stand out among so many millions of people and so many tweets? Think about it, less than half of these users, even though it's a lot, only log in, they log in every day, once a day. Less than a third of them check Twitter a few times a day. The average user follows 200 people or so. If you're like me, you follow several thousand, maybe, I don't know, close to 4,000. The average user is on six minutes a day. 500, millions, 500 million tweets are sent every day. That's almost 6,000 a second. Some of those tweets might be, hopefully, uh, coming from this audience about this presentation. And the half-life of a tweet is only about 24 minutes. Half-life means within that span of time, that's where you're gonna get half of your engagement, half of your results. So if you don't get any attention within that first half hour or so, you might as well forget about it. That's why there's reason to be producing good content, to be interacting with your followers and your audience so they will pay attention to you, and to be active on a regular basis. Frequency counts for a lot because we, as human beings, they say, have less of an attention span than the goldfish. <laughs> okay, eight seconds. So think of those millions of tweets, the half-life of your tweet, only 24 minutes or so. If you get no response, no retweets, no likes within that first 24 minutes, I'm saying forget about it, move on, tweet again. One of the most important things in companies, what we're really working on talking to our clients and prospects about at Overdrive is employee advocacy. Getting all of the people within your company to be active on social media. Because Rachel, Ashley, myself, Brooke, Margie, any one of us at our companies back at the office, we might be writing the greatest blog posts in the world and tweeting, and doing YouTube videos, but if it's only us, it's only gonna get disseminated that far. The importance is to get a team going and helping to spread that word, to propagate your messages. Everyone in your company, everyone in this room is a curator and creator of content. Creator, you write it yourself, like Margie does, like I do, like a lot of us do. We write blog posts. Rachel's been writing some great blog posts at Overdrive as an intern, awesome blog posts. The curation, so maybe you can't create, maybe you're not a writer, but you can curate. Curate means to collect other people's content, look it over, and then share what you think is important to your audience. Like a curator at a museum, you curate the museum's worth, the library's worth of content on the internet and share it with your own audience. It's like this commercial. And again, those of you who are in the audience of a certain age, when I first tried those. Saturday Organic Shampoo with Pure Wheat Germ Oil and Honey, it was so good I told two friends about it. And they told two friends. And so on, and so on, and so on. And believe me, there's still nothing like the original Saturday Organic. 
You'll be super shy and super body. And super fresh smelly hair. Try it, and you'll tell your friends about it. And they'll tell their friends, and so on, and, and so, so on. on. And so sure on. And get the original. That's, That's the message I'm the trying to get across. And conditioner. The pure wheat germ oil and honey. Silly ad. It was actually a very popular ad back in the early 80s. But the point is, the point about sharing. So what she's saying is, hey, I'm talking about this shampoo, and it's a great shampoo, and if I like it, this is before the internet, so this is literally how they had to do it. You could advertise, but the company was trying to get word of mouth going and saying, our shampoo is so great, word of mouth's gonna spread the message about our shampoo, and more and more people exponentially are gonna love it and use it and continue to promote it, and that's what we're trying to do in social media, and it's so much easier now than it was then to spread the word about a product or service because of social media. So on and so on and so on. That's what we want. And what I want right now is this to see. Any questions so far? So how about we, could someone look at this, the clicker doesn't seem to be working, so I might have to do it manually. Marsha, tell us about how you were using, I'm gonna catch you off guard. <laughs> how are you, what are you finding works best for you in terms of getting the word out? And does that message resonate, what I was just saying? If you have a bunch of people who tweet. I find if I don't, if I have a day off, or a few days off from tweeting or, or commenting on LinkedIn, that I have a lot less, in, far less engagement than if I, than when I do it. So what you said is really key. Take a day or two off, forget, I mean, God forbid you take a week or two off. <laughs> but once I start, if I, you know, the more co comments I make, the more activity and engagement I get. And, and it, it, it's 100% true. If I disappeared and stopped blogging or tweeting, it's or so LinkedIn, important. I wouldn't exist. Employee, I wouldn't get any work. They wouldn't know. I in in having a a gaggle, if you will, yeah. a, a a tribe, yeah. a group of people who can support your efforts. So again, you could write the best blog post in the world, but if you don't have anyone but yourself to help promote it, to read it, to spread the message, then that all that effort is for nothing. So. Social media allows you to build a network of friends and fans, and then we just want to move to the next slide, if all possible, on the screen. And then have them help promote your message. Is there a way to pause that, Ashley? No? Okay, we'll keep going. Um, why don't we pause, and, and then we'll continue once we get this fixed. Why don't we take a short break while I get this fixed? Sorry about this. Are you, are you open for a quick question before the, the break? Sure. Yeah, you can continue, but actually, you might as well stop now.